Don't worry. You didn't somehow travel back to two years ago. The Fairly Odd Parents really is getting another reboot. And the previous one that crashed and burned isn't even one year old yet. And so far, it's looking to be the most drastic change yet. A new art style, new medium of animation, a bunch of new characters, and an entire plot synopsis leak. I can't act super surprised about this, as I've known about its existence for a couple months at this point, but I was shocked at just how much of this cartoon has been leaked so far. Oh yeah, that's right. None of this has been officially announced, like when we discussed the previous reboot. So there is the slightest chance that this won't amount to anything given how much cancellations are going on right now, but it really does feel like Nick is making room for this thing, given the fact that they've already taken the live action reboot off Paramount Plus, so there literally is now nowhere to watch it. Yet, it still somehow got a Kids' Choice Award last month, so I, I, don't, I don't know either. If you don't remember, which honestly, I don't blame you, that reboot took place in a live-action world with 2D Cosmo and Wanda slapped on top of it for brand recognition. It's not particularly funny or interesting, and after a month or so, everybody forgot about it. So now there's this. When this got leaked, the immediate reaction from 99% of the internet was, why? Why do we need another Fairly Odd Parents reboot? Not only because of it being so soon from the previous, but also because there are so many other more deserving cartoons out there that are deserving of a revival, mainly from not being able to properly have its time to shine when initially airing. And I get this complaint, I really do. My Life as a Teenage Robot is the big one I'm seeing folks call for a revival of at the minute, and I couldn't agree more, but I like the Fairly Odd Parents. So my interest is always piqued whenever a new thing gets announced from it. Another thing that didn't help was how much the creator of the original, Butch Hartman's, reputation has tanked in recent years. And also people just going back to the original and realizing that it wasn't all that amazing to begin with. Oh, well, I disagree. I think people really have just forgotten how big the Fairly Odd Parents was back in its head. Eh? There's a reason it got 10 seasons and is being brought back so frequently. It's beloved. For a long while, it was the second biggest cartoon in the world. Second to SpongeBob. I'm mostly surprised because of how Nick barely includes the thing in their celebrations. I'm still pissed off about the lack of Timmy in those video games. I will rant about that till the fucking day I die. But really, this seems like a best case scenario for those who want something new from the series. As not only does it seemingly take place over a massive time skip with different and takes on these characters, but also, most shockingly, doesn't even have Timmy. So let's take a look at everything we currently know about the brand new Fairly Odd Parents reboot to see if it could even hold a candle towards the beloved original, or possibly be even better. But first, uh, look, I needed a transition to show you my epic Brian Griffin poster. Freaking sweet, huh? If you want to get one yourself, then am I sure glad this video is sponsored by Display It. This video is sponsored by Display It. Display It is a one-of-a-kind metal poster, featuring designs from all your favorite licenses and brands, such as South Park, Family Guy, Star Wars, Marvel, there, there's a bunch, trust me. The main thing I loved about these were how easy they were to set up. They come with two magnets that you stick to your wall and BAM! Took like 20 seconds and all my room is brightened up by the very presence of Brian Griffin. With many amazing designs, both official and ones done by their over 40,000 talented artists, you were thought you're not gonna find something you like. And with them only taking four to five days to arrive, it'll be no time before you've got that thing hanging on your wall. Check out my link in the description, and check out some of their fantastic posters. And thanks to Displit for sponsoring this video. So, how does this compare to Nick's last field attempt to bring back this beloved franchise? Well, that's a complete 180, first of all. The most notable aspect of this reboot would be the shift to entirely 3D animation. Now, on paper, that sounds like a nightmare, given how... You know, every single other time the series has been translated to 3D, it's been sheer and utter nightmare fuel. But when you look at the test animation, it really is the best case scenario when it comes to this idea. It actually looks kinda... good? You know what else looks good? My brand new podcast episode that just came out where I talk about how Brian Griffin's death made me cry as a child. Yes, really. You should go and comment on it right now saying, Brian Griffin is... cool. Now, I can only show you bits and pieces here because I'm not really interested in getting a knock on my door from Paramount, but one thing I'm happy to see them taking advantage of are reducing the frames. Think Spider-Verse are the new Puss in Boots movie, although obviously on a much lower budget. But really, it looks quite nice. It's expressive, they're still restricting themselves to those flat angles the original is known for. And it's nice seeing Cosmo and Wanda being shown to care about each other, even if it does just consist of reused dialogue from the original series. Again, test animation. One thing worth noting, however, is the slightly different art style they're going for. And while I do prefer the original designs, I can see what they were going for here. Something I began noticing over the years is that the original Fairly Odd Parents never stuck to its model sheets. It's something I actually recently spoke to classic SpongeBob storyboard artist Jay Lander about. 
Check it out. But if you look at the model sheets for a character like Timmy, you'd realize that they rarely ever stuck by that. He's either drawn a little bigger or his eyes a tad smaller or with longer legs and whatnot. The storyboard artists had a lot of control over how these characters looked. And if you look at the stock production art from the first season of the series, you'd notice that they were often given pretty small eyes, especially Wanda. So it at least makes some sense to me. And while I'm not a fan of her pink pants and yellow sneakers, I like the little thing on her collar of her shirt. You know, the thing. Really, I have no problems with this new art style. Other characters aside, but hey. The main thing I was curious about when it came to this reboot was how are they gonna handle it? The original was run into the grind for 10 seasons and 3 movies, then its corpse was dug up again for that terrible reboot, which really give a lot of folks the impression that bringing back the Fairly Odd Parents just wouldn't work, but... I never agreed with that sentiment. My favorite aspect of the show was always how they were able to tell these episodic adventures while giving hints of continuity, whether it be from returning villains, adding bits of lore, or simply showing Timmy growing up and becoming a better person. Or a worse person, but that was interesting too. After around season 7, they really gave up on doing that, and the live action crap attempted it near the end of its run, but too little too late if you ask me. Also didn't need to see Vicky want to f*** Crocker, but oh well. But that's what gives me so much confidence for this reboot, because after reading the entire pitch bible, it seems to be giving me exactly what I wanted. Although there are some questionable decisions that leave me more so cautiously optimistic. Through reading the bible, it really seems that whoever is behind this, which I'll get into later, really wants to focus on that aspect of the original, starting off with episodic adventures that delve into becoming more serialized over time. I really love how much they focus on the dynamic between Cosmo, Wanda, and new character Hazel, really citing that as the heart of the show. We're going to be seeing her grow and change over time, and in that regard, I think with all these more serialized cartoons now, they have the opportunity to exceed the original. As there, they'd flip-flop a lot on Timmy's growth for the sake of jokes or plot ideas, it wasn't super consistent. They even claim that after a while, Poof will be brought back into the series, although much older now and taking care of his own god kid, who just so happens to be someone in school with Hazel, what a clinky dink. Our Timmy replacement Teasel, however, has me a little concerned. They make a big effort here to differentiate Hazel from Timmy, which I get. If you're going to make a Fairly Odd Parents reboot without Timmy, but instead feature a kid who's exactly like Timmy, then just have Timmy. But with the way she's described here, I get more Chloe vibes from her. And nobody wants to be a Chloe. Obviously, we haven't seen this character yet, and it's all about execution, but I do worry with the way she's described. You know, it's one of those things where you're asked during a job interview for some of your weaknesses, but they don't actually want to hear your weaknesses, and so you take a positive and try to spin it into a negative. It's full of that. Like, Chloe was perfect and everybody loved her, but sometimes, she, she cared too much and made mistakes. Yeah, that's worth fairies. Fuck, I stubbed my toe last week. Can I get some too? I get similar kind of vibes from Hazel, her character description listing such phrases as She's smart, she's caring, and she's quirky. Quirky is a word that is slowly making me want to tear my fucking eyes out whenever I hear it. To me, the appeal of Timmy was that he was a little shithead. He was selfish and irrational and oftentimes played the straight man to Cosmo, Wanda, and all the magic surrounding him. What do you think, Timmy? I think I'm calling the cops. Again, I don't want a character who's exactly Timmy because I have the original series for that, but I'm hoping with Hazel they show some kind of restraint, which I can see them doing. They list all these positives, but show some sort of nuance to it, such as her seeing situations as very black and white, which can create scenarios where she screws up or how she's intelligent but lacks critical thinking. Again, this could very easily go either way, so hold out my thoughts until we see it in execution. One thing I'm curious about though is how the world reacts to Hazel. Like, why does she have fairy godparents? The reason they list here is that Hazel is moving to a new town with her dad, and her older brother isn't going to be coming with them, which is leaving her feeling very introverted. Boo hoo. Timmy was a bratty kid, but you sympathize for him because he has a miserable life. His parents were never home, the dickheads couldn't even be bothered showing up for the intro. He had to deal with a mean babysitter all the time, he got bullied at school, had like three friends, the girl he liked didn't even know his name. I'd be a fucking prick too if I had to live in this world. And I'm already a fucking prick, can you imagine that? And therefore, you're happy that he has some positivity in his life in Cosmo and Wanda. But that kind of harshness where the entire world is beating down on one character isn't really seen in many shows nowadays. I feel it's a very 90s and 2000s underdog way of approaching stories. But here, Hazel just being a little introverted doesn't seem like it warrants getting any wish she wants granted. Also, when does this take place? It mentions Cosmo and Wanda having been on break for 10,000 years, so like, does this show take place in the year 12,023, or is this gonna be in its own separate canon where Timmy never existed? 
Honestly, that would make me a little upset. Fairly Otter definitely went overboard with the Timmy callbacks using it for a simple fan service. But being in a universe where he never had Cosmo and Wanda? I don't know, makes me sad, you know, purely for nostalgic reasons, but still. I don't know, maybe you could have Cosmo and Wanda act a little differently after experiencing all their adventures with Timmy, be a little wiser or maybe in smaller ways like we could see the Timmy wall from inside their castle, I don't know. I would just like it if they at the very least acknowledged him in some form. Because oh boy, do some of these new characters not give me a lot of hope for the secondary cast. We have Wynn, who has purple hair, a cool cap, and skateboard. There's like a whole paragraph about them and it's just constant gawking at how cool and perfect and loved by all they are. What an interesting character. Then there's a kid who owns a popular ASMR channel. We even get a sneak peek at returning characters like Jorgen. I actually like what they do with him. Given his obvious inspiration from Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's a funny idea for them to basically make him what Arnold is now, just a nice old dad figure. <laughs> I don't really care for any of the listed plot synopsis they give, like this tech guy becoming obsessed with fairies after becoming confused as to why Hazel is the only kid not to want his new app. That kind of stuff makes me recoil, but at this rate I've just accepted all this modern stuff being in cartoons, you can't fight it. But I will say, overall, I am confident. I won't say what the names listed are, but it seems the folks developing this had experience writing for Craig of the Creek and Infinity Tree in. Two cartoons I've barely seen, but hear a bunch of positive stuff about. And so that at least gives me some sort of confidence that this could be good. Especially given how it really does come off like they want to add a lot of heart to the show, and care about it being good. As opposed to that... other... reboot. But really, only time will tell. Who knows when we're gonna hear next about this thing. Might not be till next year, or maybe Nick will cancel it altogether. If there's one thing we can all count on, though, it's that the Fairly Odd Parents will never die. It'll go on... forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And- Baba Booey! <laughs>